She told me I had the baseline yeah. And everything will be fine oh, yeah. She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation She told me I had the baseline Everything will be fine She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation Hey there sweet souls! How are you? It's your Forbes Fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, today's pick a card is What's blocking your manifestations? What's blocking you? So, I've got pile number one with the white howlite. I've got pile number two with rhodochrosite, I think it's, oh, I'm pretty sure. And then I love this one. Pile number three has got this raw heart um, um, that's amethyst, but it's not polished. It's, it's, and I love it. It's got all sorts of hills and valleys. So, pile number one, pile number two, Pile number three, take time to pick your pile, to listen to your intuition. If it's with cards, if it's with crystals, I call them rocks. Um, you decide which pile your intuition is calling you towards. And I'll see you there on the other side. Hey there, pile number one, how are you? It's your Force Fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, today's pick a card is asking the question, what is blocking your manifestations? Let's take a look at what is blocking your manifestations. I am going to put the intent into each deck and the question of what is blocking your manifestations and we will see what the universe spirit guides I'm an angel person I'm all about the angels the spirits and because I've been using this um, what is it called the galactic heritage deck I'm also going to include with these this week in particular um, the celestial beings because they're involved as well as I'm finding with this deck that I have the celestial beings are definitely included with the angels the spirit guides the ancestors so what are their messages for you regarding what it is that's blocking your manifestations what is blocking your Manifestations pile number one. Let's take a look. Oh, speaking of the galactic deck, let's do that one next. Let's do all the oracle and then we'll get into the tarot. They shuffle beautifully, I do have to say. What is blocking? Whoa. Pile number one's manifestations. Let's, we got all our oracles. Let's go to the tarot. One bridge. These ones are wild today. Next tarot deck, what is blocking pile number one's manifestations? Let's take a look right there. One, 
two, and we will take that one for number three. <clears throat> and finally, I am loving these panda cards. On my free for all Saturdays, I was doing the panda perspective, and I might bring that back in the fall. So, what are the what is blocking? Pile number ones. Manifestations. Let's take a look. Last one. Little baby cards. Oh, Taurus wanted to show its face. Well, it came out right side up. Let's take it. Taurus. Speaking of Taurus, I believe Uranus is in Taurus. And Jupiter. So it makes me want to. Taurus is coming out. Right? So let's make some room here and get, we got Taurus and let's get another one. I feel like getting another one. Taurus is looking right at something. Taurus is definitely second house manifestation. So what is blocking? Let's find out. Right there. All right. Let's take a look. We got Taurus out. What's the second of our astrological card? Pisces. Well, 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 let's take a look. What does Taurus and Pisces say? Let's do Pisces first. The strengths. Mystical, intuitive, imaginative, compassionate, sensitive, and romantic. But the weakness of Pisces is escapism, unrealistic and submissive. So, could it be, to begin with, that you're running away from your manifestations? That you are being unrealistic or submissive to your manifestations? Taurus, the strength, is steady, driven, tenacious, patient, persistent, solid, trustworthy, and tasteful, but the weakness of Taurus is materialistic, resistance to change, indulgent, possessive, stubborn, and narrow-minded. Now, that can, Taurus energy can really hone in, sort of laser focus on one thing, and there are no other ways of going about it, of ways of doing things. And I find it very interesting that it's paired up with Pisces because that's really the complete opposite as far as energies. Pisces is very much mystical, imaginative, intuitive, compassionate, sensitive, and romantic. So you put that together with steady, driven, patient, persistent, solid, trustworthy, and tasteful and you have got some real powerful elements for manifestation so what is it that's blocking pile number one's manifestation law of karma well this should be interesting let's take a look the law of karma mm. The quality of energy that brings you into cosmic balance. Karma is the energy of balance. And it's interesting because I really see a balance between the Taurus energy and the Piscean energy. So what might be blocking you are the weaknesses or the negative aspects of both signs. That being out of, uh, sorry, that being with Taurus is, again, that traditional sort of stubbornness, narrow-minded, possessive, indulgent, resistant to change, and the negative aspects of Pisces is escapism, re unrealistic and submissive, almost that passive-aggressive, or not passive-aggressive, almost like that energy of victim, of submission. Well, that's not going to work for me. Well, that doesn't work, and I'm going to um, continue on with this uh, have not lack mentality. So it's finding balance between the positive aspects and what's blocking, I, I'm picking up, what's blocking your manifestations is the inability to have an open mind when you're talking Taurus. 
is the inability to maybe stick with it and give up when it comes to Pisces. Hmm. So karma is the balance between the reality within and the one outside. Very much within with Pisces and the one outside with Taurus. Interesting. Manifestation, manifesting energy gives you the balance and fuel to evolve. The tree of life and wisdom was grown from the seed of karma. Whatever you set in motion must work itself out. Interesting. It must work itself out. So let's take a look at the fairies, the unicorn and the maiden. Communication with unicorn, purification, uncover, undercover action. Well, isn't that Piscean energy right there? The unicorn and the maiden. Let's take a look. It's number 10. Maybe the fairies will give you some indicators as to what is blocking your manifestations. The unicorn is a symbol of ancient magic rising. That's manifestation in itself. Purification of the earth and etherical realms taking place. The maiden and the unicorn standing together indicate that you are receiving communications about detoxifying, clearing your environment and following your life path and being a peaceful activist for change. Okay. So in saying that, what could be blocking your manifestations is the fact that you need to detoxify. You need to you are receiving communications about detoxifying and clearing your environment. That's your environment physically with Taurus and mentally and emotionally with Pisces. The door between worlds for you are growing wider and wider. More and more is coming through for you. Please know that you have a purpose, which is the moment now to help the environment. You are a peaceful being, sensitive and yet so very strong and powerful. Keep some of your work secret. Do not try to attract attention. The new children who are becoming adults now are aided in their life purpose by the unicorn. It is time to protect and help something precious and threatened to survive. Bless your food and water to ingest healing unicorn energy. So this is really talking about detoxification. This is really talking about what's blocking and it could be the fluoride in the water. It could be uh, because that does not block the pineal gland. I believe it does. So getting downloads could be blocked, which is really critical information. I'm going to say the downloads are the information of how to manifest and it's then the fairies are telling you to clear out your environment, clear out, maybe do a cleanse, clear out your body, uh, really bless the food and, and drink, the water, really get off of the sodas, get off of the processed foods. I know it's difficult now. They're making it more difficult to acquire pure foods is what I'm calling them. Whale is your totem animal, devotion. Devotion to yourself, ah, devotion, inspiration, creativity, abundance, impulsiveness, self-assured, generosity, optimism, and impatience. If you sort of get into this energy of whale, devotion to what it is you consume, devotion to detoxifying, both on a physical, on a spiritual, on a mental, on a, a physical, on these physical planes, this will give you inspiration, creativity, and abundance. This is what the law of karma talks about, and that's the balancing of. It's the bridging of the spiritual realms, the etherical realms, and this real realm. Now, if we want to talk about um, holograms, is this a simulation? Is this world a hologram? then with toxic thoughts, toxic feelings, with that state of fear, that's what's blocking your manifestation. Let's take a look at the galactic emptiness, a feeling of emptiness. 
and seeds of polarity, the past and the future. Emptiness. I'm kind of feeling that with the seeds of polarity that comes from the past, that could, this could be you living in the past, this is what's making you feel or leaving you feeling emptiness for the future. And this is certainly not what you want to manifest. But let's take a look. Let's, these, these particular um, messages are, oh, they're, they're awe-inspiring, to be honest with you. As humanoid races began growing throughout the Lyran system, the yin-yang principle of duality became more pronounced. Well, doesn't the law of karma talk about being balanced. The quality of energy that brings you into cosmic balance, karma is the energy of balance between individuals and between individuals and between lifetimes. Karma is the balance between reality within and the one that's outside. So manifesting energy, and we're talking about what's blocking your manifestation. That was a big, huge hit on the top of my house. Interesting. I'll check that out later. I don't know if you heard that, but it made the house shake. So manifesting energy gives you the balance and fuel to evolve. The tree of life and wisdom was grown from the seed of karma. And this uh, seeds of polarity talks about at first the polarities remain balanced but because our cosmic journey is about growth and the integration of polarity those polarities had to become more pronounced before they could be healed take a look at how polarity plays out in your life today do not fear it as you did in ancient times learn how to stay balanced law of karma, even amid the temptation to choose one pole over the other. Wisdom comes from embracing both rather than choosing one side over another. And the last card in this deck is 108. Orion Light. Emptiness. Future. Imagine taking off in a plane. At first it is bumpy and the scenery is filled with many distracting things. This represents the mind. As you take off and fly through the clouds, it is like passing through the emotions. Sometimes there is bumpiness in the clouds. Eventually you rise above the clouds and there is nothing but endless empty sky. This is your true state of consciousness an endless, empty field of awareness that contains nothing. There is no opinions or desires, only light. The Orion light within you, the sky, has always existed and always will. When you recognize this, you awaken. Imagine taking off in a plane. So imagine at first it's bumpy and the scenery is filled with many distracting things. Well, isn't that what life is right now? This represents the mind. And again, that fast um, attention span. As you take off and fly through the clouds, it's like passing through the emotions. Sometimes there is bumpiness in the clouds. Eventually you rise above and there is nothing but endless empty sky. So this is rising above to achieve your manifestations. What's blocking you are all these distractions. Emotional distractions, visual distractions, mental distractions. Distractions. Let's see what Buddha has. The voice of Dharma, quiet the mind, and the soul will speak, so quiet the mind, and the soul will speak, and manifestation, man, it, Manifestations. Manifestations will take place. This is number three. So let's read number three. Right-mindedness is of two kinds. Thoughts free from lust, free from ill will, 
and from cruelty. This is called mundane right-mindedness, which yields worldly fruits and brings good results. But whenever there is thinking, considering, reasoning, thought, or application with a holy mind, a mind turned away from the world and conjoined with a holy path being pursued, these verbal operations of the mind are called ultra-mundane right-mindedness, which is not the world but beyond the known universe and conjoined with the path. The first of the eight auspicious symbols, the sacred conch shell trumpets the truth of the Dharma in every direction. Do you see it spiraling as the heavens, its shape and echo of the stars? Above and below, within, this spacious silence seek the sound of your own sacred voice this is quieting the mind quieting the distractions to listen to your own voice your soul's purpose your soul's path your soul's direction so what's blocking you sweet pile number one are all the worldly distractions, desires, wants, needs to quiet the mind is really what both, and it's interesting that I've got right above it, Pisces and Taurus. Interesting. So, King of Wands, Confidence, and the Seven of Swords. Ooh, 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 ooh. Is this, and in Pisces fashion, lying to yourself? I'm not distracted. I, I don't care. I, I don't watch um, television. I don't listen to music. I don't uh, go to the gym. I don't do any of these things that could distract me from quieting my mind. I don't do that. That's what I'm picking up off the Seven of Swords and being confident. And this, this King of Wands really is bringing me back to that Taurus card of the weakness, which is that of stubbornness. Well, I can quiet my mind. Of course, I do it every day. Do I meditate? Well, not every day, but, right? The Queen of Wands. We both got the King and the Queen of Wands. These are the magical and the five of wands, this is internal battle that is really being um, what goes on within shows up in your outside world. And the, and the truth, okay, right above this seven of swords, what is your truth? Can you hear your soul's voice? Do you know the soul's voice? Do you understand it? Do you confuse it? I used to confuse my intuition with my ego so intuition would be my soul's voice my higher self and because that voice for me is very um what would be considered an ego voice so that would be brash that would be bold that would be uh straightforward and we're doing this and no questions asked a very um what would be considered or taught to us as your ego's voice well in i learned that my ego's voice is the people pleasing the quiet one that says well you they've asked you to move help you, you have time to find and then you, as a single mom I have to find someone else to take care of the kids so I can help someone instead of saying what my intuition is, is you don't have time for this they can find someone who doesn't have five children to take care of <laughs> you just moved to the hundred acre woods were they there for you that was my intuition that was my soul's voice my higher self and i it took me a long time to know the difference between the two because my quiet voice is my ego which is kind of opposite of what they teach nine of wands nine of wands is what the pandas and the fool taking a leap of faith maybe into the voice of dharma and the strength to do so all right look at that not holding back what's stopping your manifestation so you have both the king and the queen of wands these are magic these are ma this is the magic for me the wands are kind of it's it's like a magic wand to me as a reader i see wands as, as magic i really do as taking those steps taking those actions 
the Five of Wands. I see the Five of Wands as outside influences, distractions, as the voice of Dharma mentions. Quiet the mind and the soul will speak. But there's all sorts of other opinions, other people talking, other unsolicited. You didn't ask for their opinion and here they are giving it. And then truth. What is your truth? Is this your truth? Or are you lying to yourself with this Seven of Swords? Let's take a look at what this creator, this deck creator, has to say. Let's start with that. I really want to start with that. The uh, Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords. Fruitlessness. A misguided enterprise. A childish prank. A rash endeavor. Provocative, a provocative act, a daring gesture, a risky venture, but not a fatal one. The Seven of Swords are the burden of a sly, smiling soldier. He carries off the weapons of his adver adversaries. He has left behind few of the swords, and his enemies have discovered him and rise to pursue him. Will the youth escape safely? How foolhardy was it to... Um, abscond with his hall. Will he prevail with speed and grace, or will he be captured by his pursuers? Like Odysseus, he is a crafty fellow, willing to take a risk, but he has placed himself in danger, It, it and it remains to be seen whether he prevails or triumphs. The moon, harbor of hidden difficulties, adorns his brow. Consolation, Aquarius, lies under his feet. But the moon very much brings me back to Pisces. Are you sneaking off from the meditation, from the quieting of the mind? Are you just, again, with that mutable energy, just kind of going from one thing to the next, from one idea to the next, from one project to another? King of Wands. And that could be, very well be, is what's, what's um, blocking your manifestation. A king of wands marshals fiery forces of change, movement, volatility, victory. If personified, the king will appear as a forceful, ambitious, and successful person. So the king of wands, like all the kings, sits astride a horse. In this case, a dark, bucking war horse. This animal is also his special symbol, it appears on the emblem of his breastplate. The horse is intelligent, sensitive, and graceful, but it can be um, in place it can be an implacable warrior's mount. War is the purview of emperors and kings who are often quick to engage in conflict. The stern browed king has a medieval European aspect with his mustache and full armor and winged helmet. He holds the beleafed wand of his suit, which serves also as a torch, a light in the darkness. Indeed, a light in the darkness. Are you that magical light, especially with this Piscean energy? Are you that magical light that is lighting the way for others? Interesting. Are you bringing light? Are you bringing light to the shade of the Seven of Swords? Let's find out what the Queen has to say. Right above her king, the Queen of Wands. Right, looking at her wand instead of the Five of Wands. Interesting. Let's take a look. The Queen of Wands. She is independent, determined, and self-confident. Absolutely. But I think what's blocking, what's blocking you pile number one from your manifestations is in fact insecurity could even be jealousy of seeing other people manifest other people achieve their manifestations and in, in what seems to be so easily and quickly so that's what's blocking looking at others as I said she's looking at her want which is that determination self-confidence and independence but is she looking at the wand or is she looking at others the Five of Wands is competition, diversity, tension, reality. And what is blocking is the release 
of tension. You need to relieve the tension, the inner conflict, the agree, and just agree to disagree. This is where you take in other people's opinions, if they're solicited or unsolicited, and go, that's fine. I'm still, I've got confidence in what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and what I'm manifesting. These are blocking. These opinions of others, oh, you haven't done that yet, are blocking your manifestation. Pile number one, the Ace of Swords, success, breakthrough, clarity, and new idea. So what's blocking this success, your manifestations, is confusion, clouded judgment, and chaos of the mind, which is exactly what the Seven of Swords talks about. So let's see what the pandas have for you. I'm going to start right above the Ace of Swords. I'm going to go to the Strength card first. The Strength card. The panda's message is strength comes in all shapes and sizes. Though we are not as ferocious as a lion or the big cats of the wild, we are powerful in our own ways. There is power to be had when we choose to see ourselves for who we truly are. Interesting. Yes, not running away from who we truly are. Beautiful. Um, for who we truly are and what we're capable of. That's the security in or the insecurity of the Queen of Wands. I'm good at eating, says the Strength Panda, for one. And Mousy here is an expert swordsman. He sits right on top of his head. We are about hashtag cute but fierce. The light attributes of this card is softness, inner strength, self-acceptance, and autonomy. What might be blocking you from your manifestation is weakness and security, just like the Queen of Wands. Lack of center and boundaries, complacency, which is what Pisces talked about. The Fool is the next card from the Pandas. Stay curious. Let your nose guide you towards the next best adventure. You may not know what you are leaving behind, but you may not know what you're leaving behind. You may not know what you will find, but you will know it's going to be good. That's confidence of the Queen of Wands and the determination of the Queen of the King of Wands right there. But you will know it's going to be good. Destiny's calling on the other side of the world, calling for you to arrive. Exploration are the light attributes, potential, epic beginnings, and the start of a new adventure. But this shadow and this could what be stopping you from your manifestation is recklessness, irresponsibility, and non-commitment. Non-commitment to that which is what you want to manifest, giving up almost before you even begin. And the final card out is that Nine of Wands. Nine of Wands. Take time to take a break from all that manifesting. This is exactly what this read is about. Except there's no time to take a break. There are still businesses to attend to. I'm tired, but I can do this. And that's the King of Wands right there. A panda shouldn't be too overworked to look cute for the people, but oh well, this panda can handle it. Light attributes, protection, endurance, overcoming hard battles, and harnessing your inner power. And what could be blocking your manifestation is defensiveness, high-strung tension, and antagonistic assumptions, which is the Five of Wands. So that's what I see for you. Pile number one. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number two. How are you? And welcome to your reading. I'm going to start welcoming you. Welcome to your reading. And today's pick a card is all about what's blocking your manifestations. Let's take a look. As I shuffle these cards, I am going to put the intention of what is blocking your manifestations. Pile number two. Let's get a totem. What is blocking pile number two's manifestations? Let's take a look. Fairy deck. What is blocking pile number two's manifestations? What's blocking pile number two's manifestations?
Let's block it. Pile number twos. Manifestations. What's blocking? Pile number twos. Manifestations. Let's get some of these. I love these cards. These are the Galactic Heritage cards. What's blocking? What's blocking? Pile number two is Manifestations right there. Now to the tarot. What's blocking? Pile number twos. Manifestations. What's blocking? Pile number twos. Manifestations. Oh, there's three. There's three. Well, how am I going to fit these on? Let's just, hey, three came out. So let's make this work. Hmm, I am going to put, let's take this one over, this one over, and take this one down. Hmm. Put these ones here, and this one up here. All right, that'll work. That will work. All right, and the next deck. What is blocking pile number two's manifestations? And the final deck. What's blocking? Pile number two's manifestations. And I do believe I have room for one astrological card. So let's get that out. What's blocking pile number two's manifestations? Right there. Let's take a look. Pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. This looks good. I like it. All right. Now I've, these cards are so big that I've only been doing two, but this is the first time three has actually come out. So we're making it work. Astrological card. Self. Oh, first house. The first house. Is it, could it be you, your ego, that's blocking your manifestations? Let's take a look. The first house. Ego. Yes. Identity. Consciousness. Focus. Appearance. How we are perceived. So it could be your, what's blocking you is that you care too much about how you're perceived. I'm going to go to this one next. Normally I would go to this one, but it's right beside. Interesting. Beaver is your totem animal. Diligence, self-sufficiency, patience, motivation, progression, structure, ingenuity, and experience. Are you worried? If Okay. As far as manifestation, it seems to me that you are not really talking about it. You're worried about People are going to call you crazy. What do you mean manifestation? Um, and the diligence. Are you doing it secretly? Are you um, expressing your manifestations? Are you noting synchronicities? Let's say you, I don't know, you want to go out and you manifest. You're like, I have no money to go out. Wouldn't it be funny, you say to yourself, wouldn't it be great if I, the jacket I put on, I find two 20s in there or a $50 bill or something like, a, you know, whatever money that you need to go out, that's what you find in that jacket. And there it is. And there it is. This is what happens when you're by yourself, where your ego and how you per think other people's perceive you 
you don't want to be that crazy one. You don't want to be perceived as spiritual or um, eccentric. Because when it comes to beaver, beaver is very much um, a diligent, self-sufficient, patient, motivation, progression, structure. I'm almost feeling that this is work on your manifestations secretly. Especially with that first house card coming out. Let's see what this one says. Laughter. Well, well, well. I think this is your higher self advice as to what you need to do to really help your manifestations. Laughter. You need to not take yourself so seriously. The strongest healing tool available is laughter. The energy lightens and enlightens the individual. Laughter is the channel through which healing and release are found. Light up and expand awareness. Bring laughter into all aspects of your reality. Laughter is the source. Yes, this is advice of a solution. It's kind of laughing at yourself. We, I saw this the other day. This is the grail fairy. This is finding your um, feminine aspects. This is really celebrating the water you, the water within. Let's take a look. So what is blocking your manifestations? It could very well be that you're really not honoring your feminine side. So let's take a look. Flow, the flow of feminine energy and moon cycles, blossoming, bursts, serenity, female beauty, the taking of sacred waters. Interesting. The first and second phases of the triple goddess. The first and second phases of the triple goddess. So that would be maiden and mother. Every birth is a new life, a new chance princess of nature coming back into the wonder and knowledge of your sacred body. Okay, I'm picking up a different message from Grail Fairy today regarding what's blocking your manifestations, especially with this first house card. And that is if you care too much about what other people think on the physical front, on the body, about your body, this is what's blocking all of the work that your that your totem animal, the beaver, is putting into. So, some advice is drink more pure water. Waters of fertility allow healing tears to flow. Red and white springs of Avalon, lords, sacred wells, rivers, ponds, and bodies of water, and being watched over by the Fae will assist you in becoming fertile, both literally and metaphorically. This is becoming fertile in also your manifestations. Okay, let's take a look at what the galactics. Oh, interesting. Hive mind and leap of faith. Now, hive mind, especially with this first house card, could very well be talking about how important you put the opinions of others onto yourself. This is definitely what's blocking, is the opinion. Oh, well, let's take a look. This is, oh, another bird's hit my window. I don't know if you heard that, but I saw it. There are many extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial insectoid species that have contacted Earth for thousands of years. They are peaceful and have a harmonious society that is based on the idea of group thinking as one. Most humans shun the idea of a loss of individuality, but it can also be a freeing experience whereby the ego no longer dominates one reality. And we have the first house. The first word was ego. The ego no longer dominates one reality. So is this hive mind card telling you, advising you, pile number two, that to really see what's blocking your manifestations, to really see your manifestations come to fruition is to drop the ego, to not let it dominate one's reality. 
Since all consciousness is ultimately one, anyways, insectoid, insectoid beings reflect this truth. You have connected with these beings in the past and their energy is now asking you to remember the oneness that lies underneath the illusion of separation. And haven't we gone through that? The illusion of separation. 57. Next card. Leap of faith. For thousands of years, humans have been used to living with the mindset of polarity. We continually label things as good or bad. If we don't know how to label something, we feel confused or insecure. But now that it is time to integrate polarity and transform as a species, we must take a leap of faith, jumping off the cliff into the unknown to a realm where labels like that don't exist. We must learn to simply be with things as they are without the addiction of labeling them. As we do this, this is very ego, our consciousness transforms and we heal once and for all the old wounds from our Orion. Or, I didn't say Orion. Heritage. Interesting. And hive mind. I... Again, this is very interesting, the hive mind. Because what's blocking your manifestations is really taking a leap of faith. And this is the present. This is the parallel. So present is right now. Parallel is all dimensions, all basically at once. Parallel, right? And the idea that your ego, this is very ego driven, right? And to lighten up that ego with the laughter. This is all ego. Let's take a look at the tarot. Let's see what it has. We have three. The two of cups. The Seven of Cups and the Star. Wow. Oh, I didn't do Buddha. Let's do Buddha. It's a tiger staring right at me. Gentle Strength. This is very much the Strength card. Work out your own salvation. Do not depend on others, which very much speaks to the first house about caring too much about what other people think. That's 23, that's also a five. 23. It is as if a person is pierced by a poisoned arrow and their friends and relatives want to send for a doctor, but the person says, I will not have this arrow pulled out until I know who has wounded me. Whether they are a noble, a priest or a servant, what their name is and to what family they belong to, whether they are tall, short, medium height, such a person would die before they could adequately learn all of this. Therefore, the person who seeks their own welfare should not wait to pull out this arrow, this arrow of pain and sorrow. In the world, in this world, there is birth, there is decay, there is death, sorrow, lamination, lament is what I should say. Pain, grief, and despair. Lamination, I think, is a floor. <laughs> Lamentation. But the existence of these is attainable if you, to you even in this present life. We got present right here. Take a leap of faith. The tiger is a symbol of strength and power. You alone have the strength to rid yourself of sorrow, pain, and lamentation inflicted upon you. You have the power to overcome anger and hatred. Do not dwell on the unknown. Ah, leap of faith, for it will do you no good. This gentle strength really speaks to laughter. This gentle strength about those who are thrown, who are sending arrows your way. Again, I'm going back to that Grail Fairy and, being, and carrying way too much. She's holding that Ace of Cups, right, in the image. And not really caring what other, people's, what other people think of you, what they say about you, because you know thyself, first house, but this is driven by ego. So, let's take a look at the other tarot decks. 
We have the Three of Pentacles. You are working, definitely working on your spirituality, your ability to not only learn but to teach. It could be, especially with this Two of Cups here, um, a relationship, a high committed relationship, and the Fool, which is really a leap of faith taking a leap of faith on a new belief system, on a new way of being, on letting the ego take a rest. We have the two of cups again. Pile number two. And the sun. And the final panda card is your magic, the queen of wands. Confidence in who you are. This very much reminds me of the... of the... Uh, strength card in the tarot. So let's take a look. The two of cups, which we have twice out of two decks. So is this speaking about making peace with someone else? Taking a leap of faith as we have the fool and the leap of faith card? So what's, what is, so far, your ego is blocking your manifestations. The Two of Cups, right there. Love, affection, flowing good feelings, the loving unity of opposites and compliments, romance, courtship. So, the Two of Cups splash like fountains in the hands of a loving pair. The smiling couple embrace on a lotus floating on the waters, primordial emblem of sanctity and creation. Both are nude, which I will have to take care of in, in, uh... Oh, the ravens are out. There's something going on out there. I don't know if you can hear that, if the microphone's picking it up. Do you hear that? All right, well, Ravens, this is pile number two's time. Wow, they are going at it. Each figure holds out an overflowing cup of love and friendship. Their long hair intertwines above them on graceful curve and then falls into vessels like water into fountains. waves of energy they kind of the ravens the big the big boys i call them big boys the ravens when they go at it they're big they're big birds um it they, they kind of remind me of chimpanzees of monkeys like it sounds very primordial but they're birds they are really going after it's interesting they're big they're the big boys they're, they're small, medium, and large <laughs> as far as their different ages of birds and, and of ravens. There's crows, which is different altogether, but these are the big ones. They're the, about eagle size. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just got distracted by what's the commotion that's going on out here in the Hundred Acre Woods. So let's get to the Seven of Cups. And let's put this together. What's blocking your manifestations. Seven of Cups. Confusion, temptation, debauchery. Okay, spreading one's attention too thin. It's funny because my attention is now spread thin because of what's going on outside. Interesting. That's funny. Chasing too many um, enticements at once, self-indulgence, wallowing in selfish pleasure. By confronting all these dangers and distractions, the shadowy human figure may be able to take solid shape, having vanished temptation, vanquished temptation. So what are you, is it the, the self, is it the ego, is it the how you look, how people think about you? Is it that hive mind? Oh, the star, 17, the star. The star glows with love and blessings for all beings. She brings the pure sweetness of the farthest stars into the hearts and hands of humanity. Kindness, sweetness, peaceful, mutual understanding, spiritual kindness, overflowing compassion, and 
benefit. This is definitely talking about how to make with laughter, with gentle strength, with the diligence of your totem animal, with beaver, is how to make your manifestations happen and it is not to spread yourself too thin it is not to let the opinions of others or your ego which leads the way do not let your ego lead the way let your intuition lead the way and that's difficult it's easier said than done but this star card really talks about taking that leap of faith which we have here with the leap of faith card and really getting into your queen of wands magic okay so let's go to that Fool card, that leap of faith. The Fool. Let's take a look. Innocence, beginnings, possibilities, opportunity, and potential. And isn't that what the laughter card is all about? Absolutely. Moving into the Hierophant, conformity, religion, spiritual wisdom, and institutions. Is that what's holding you back? These old ideas? Again, getting spread too thin between maybe too many ideas. Again, Three of Pentacles is... The last one of this deck, of this contributor, and the Three of Pentacles, simply says collaboration, teamwork, and learning. And again, learning about your own spiritual, I'm going to say your own spiritual gifts, which brings me up to the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is my magical, my magical queen. She is. So, let's take a look at the Queen of Wands. And her message, the panda message is oh my my oh my who do we have here i can't believe it it's you i have never seen anyone with so much light pile number two i have never seen anyone with so much light and potential and possumness again i love this deck you're destined to do great things i believe in you and i want you pile number two to believe in yourself Believe in yourself. The sun is the next card. And if you are manifesting love or you're single and want love, I've got the two of cups twice. Loving relationships really manifest with love, with laughter, with a gentle strength. Be proud of who you are. As the Queen of Wands says, I've never seen anyone with a light as bright as you. You are the light, attracting others with that same light. Now, don't listen to anyone else. No. The sun. I'm quite positive that the world is bright, a bright place. The sun is the sky, the wind on my face, the grass tickling my toes, and ah, wonderful, isn't it? I think this pile your spirit guides, your galactic family is telling you to get outside, get in your bare feet and go for a walk in the grass. Just feel it. Don't you wish you could always see the world just like this, so full of light, so alive? Well, if you're the light, as the Queen of Wands has said, then yes, you will walk through life with seeing all of the light, all of the love, all of the beauty. Two of Cups. Last card out. The Two of Cups. This is all about laughter and love. So what's blocking you is fear. What's blocking you is doubt. What's blocking you is maybe the opinions of others and the worry about what other people and how they see you. That's what I'm picking up. The Two of Cups. Love is in the air. Love is in my fur. Love is you when I look into your eyes. We are just meeting, but I love you. I see you. I know you. I feel you. Is that speaking of that... We are one. Ah, our hearts are made of the same stuff, the same fluff, marching to the beat of the same drum. The light attributes, attraction to in sync, finding yourself in another kindred spirits. And what's blocking you is jealousy. Ah, desolation, loneliness, a bitter yearning, a bitter yearning. And that's what happens when you care too much about what other people, how they perceive you, what they think of you. Maybe get off your social medias. Maybe get off and just go for a walk in the grass barefoot. And that's what I see. And then watch, then see how your light shines. Then watch, then see how your manifestations come to fruition.
And that's what I see for you, pile number two. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey, pile number three. How are you? And welcome to your reading. Today's pick a card is asking the question, what's blocking your manifestations? What is blocking your manifestations? Oh, that's not how I'm doing this. This one, I'm, I'm going like this. I always admire the readers that go like this and then just pick one. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. What, and with every deck, putting the intent of what is blocking, pile number threes, manifestations, cat. You know what? I'm just going to take it. Cat wanted to come out upright. Guardianship. Detachment, that could definitely, I always thought that detachment is what helped manifestation. So this is interesting, sensuality, mystery, magic, independence, wisdom, and vigilance. This sounds more like not what's blocking, but the advice. Cat's got some advice for you, pile number three. Let's get some fairies on this. What is blocking? Pile number three's manifestations. What's blocking? Pile number three's manifestations. That one right there. Buddha, what's blocking? Pile number three's manifestations. What's blocking? Pile number three's manifestations. Oh, two Buddhas? How are we going to do this? We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Maybe I will do this. I'll put these one here. Maybe um, I'll do this and this. Yes. And what I'll do is I'll put cat up here. And let's get some galactic cards. What is blocking pile number three's manifestation? Right there. And there's two. Perfect. All right. They're just falling out. All right. And let's go to the big boys. Get into the tarot. That's the first time I've had two Buddhas. Pile number three. I'll be curious. Pile number three. That's blocking. Pile number three's manifestations. What's blocking? Pile number three's. Oh, there's two right there. Look at that. Huh. Blocking manifestations. Well, let's take a look. Next deck. What's blocking pile number three's manifestations? What are the blocks that pile number three is experiencing? Right there. One. Two, three. All right, and of course, the last deck out are my pandas. I love these messages from this creator. They are such sweet messages. So what's blocking? Pile number three. From manifesting. From their manifestations. Right there. Alright. Last one. Let's see if I can move fairies over. Cat can go there. And that'll give me room for the astrological card. Right there. All right. Cat's already shown its face. And Cat, I believe, is really saying to you, pile number three, that you are protected. Again, guardianship, right? You are protected. And 
and a sense of detachment for your magic, for your manifestation. That with or without these manifestations that may or may not um, happen for you, especially if they are if they are in line with divine law, then yes. But this is where your wisdom comes into play. Last quarter. Last quarter. Interesting. Moon cycles. The last quarter. Release and let go very much about what the detachment of cat is talking about. Let go of the habits and negative patterns that hold you back. Forgive yourself and cleanse. So that is advice as to what's holding your back, what's holding your manifestations. What are was blocking is that you need to release, that you need to forgive for any and all uh, mistakes, bad decisions that you've made. Forgive and release yourself to be able to manifest what it is you want. Now, the law of cause and effect. Interesting. The law of cause and effect. Let's take a look. The law of cause and effect. What you set in motion returns to you. You control the situations you encounter by what you empower. Everything is a cause and effect. There is a continuum, a flow, and everything is linked. To grow is to cause the flow. The effect is the expansion. The cycle ever reaches for the light, the seed to the tree, and the seed once more and to the seed once more. So the seed to the tree and the seed once more. Cause and effect. What you set in motion returns to you. So if you are setting out there that your manifestations will not come about, that you can't manifest, that in fact is a manifestation. Let's see what the fairies have. Green Man's Bride, Sacred Union, Commitment Ceremony, Maturing into Deep Relationship. A deep relationship, I think, with yourself. 38, and the forgiveness of what the last quarter talks about, that forgiveness. So, there may be I'm going to read this. Not acknowledging the necessity of honoring relationships and balance of masculine and feminine. A denial that ceremony is of any importance. Finding meaningless commitments. A lack of trust and belief in the potential of relationships. Unwilling to be involved in a true partnership. Lacking devotion. Believing in that love is lust and physical and short-lived only, or that romantic committed love is a fairy tale, in quotations. It is, but it is not unrealistic at all. It is our true nature and we engage with ourselves most deeply when we love another in a committed, strong, free, and blessed way. Short-lived, transient relationships, guilt around sexual union, fear of this self Disappearing if committed to another is what's blocking your manifestations. Interesting. The galactic spiritual technology and solar consciousness. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. 23. 20... Three. In the middle development era of the Vega civilizations, a branch of spiritual science began to focus on spiritual technology. What is spiritual technology? It is technology that assists spiritual development. It can range from external tools such as crystals, wands, frequency generators, healing tools, and more. It can also include meditation techniques that have elaborate uh, 
processes or steps that seem as if they provide a shortcut to desired goals, but can often instead lead the practitioner along a path of distraction. Okay. So is, okay, so as I read that, it, and it's a present. There's there's different suits in this deck, and it's past, present, future, and then parallel. So you have present and parallel, which I see as almost... They're two different suits, but they're one, right? Talking about what you're doing now. And it could very well be that you are trying to manifest, that you're going, you're reading, you're learning, you're um, learning about cause and effect, and you're doing these practices however they're too complicated and we need to simplify that's what i'm picking up here and that could very well be blocking you all tools are neutral and can be used in a balanced way an addictive way or a way that controls others this era in the vega civilization was a challenging one and it connects to the era on earth in present day where many are looking for spiritual shortcuts instead of doing the real deep inner work necessary for spiritual transcendence. If this card appears in your reading, it could mean different things depending on the surrounding cards. Your life circumstances and past karma, perhaps, it may imply that you are becoming too addicted to spiritual technology and need to take a look at your inner self as a source of evolution. Or perhaps the opposite is true. Perhaps you can benefit by investigating spiritual technology in a balanced way. It could also be pointing to past lives in Vega or Atlantis in which you dealt with the misuse of technology. Go within and examine what this card means in context of other factors mentioned above. 34. 34, solar consciousness. Our solar system archetypally represents all the aspects of human consciousness. This is visible through astrology. The sun represents our highest potential of consciousness, the higher self. This is the higher self card. You have pulled this card because either you already have a strong connection to your higher self or it is time to develop that relationship and I see the green it brings me back to the relationship the commitment to a deep relationship and I'm seeing that it's with your higher self solar consciousness compels us to integrate our parts and become whole again this process happens naturally as we connect with and become our higher self the process has begun sweet pile number three the process has begun the, uh, that's very much the green man's bride, what the fairies have talked about. Enlightenment bound, chaos is inherent in all compounded things. Strive on with diligence. And one more, because we got two out of this one. Free as can be, happiness or sorrow, whatever befalls you, walk on untouched and unattached. And that's very much detachment as the cat has has mentioned, let's read these ones from this creator, co-creator, my co-creators. I absolutely love co-creation here all by myself in the Hundred Acre Woods. <laughs> all right, number 16, Enlightenment Bound. There are four great efforts, including the effort to avoid. Oh, through this effort, the Bodha Vista trains one's mind to avoid the arising of evil things. They strive, put forth their energy, and strain their mind. Thus, when, they're perceive, when they perceive a form with the eye, a sound with the ear, an odor with the nose, a taste with the tongue, and or contact with the body or an object with the mind, they observe without adhering to the whole or parts. Through restraint of their senses, they strive to ward off that through which evil and maliciousness, greed and sorrow may arise. Funniness that we have sorrow right up here. Possessed of this noble control over the senses, they experience a feeling of joy into which no evil thing can enter. This is called the effort to avoid. Through the conscious effort to avoid malice, a new truth emerges. Like Manjurashi, the Buddha Vista is wisdom 
who uses the Harina Mudra to wield a wisdom sword to cut through delusion, a locust-born book to share knowledge. You can reveal joy and knowledge of what you've learned. Maybe through this cause and effect, maybe through this solar consciousness and learning that maybe sometimes spiritual technology as the Vega, um, I guess they are species, I want to, I don't know if that's the proper word, but as Vega learned through their development that you can get addicted to the spiritual technology, that you can go too far and sometimes you have to detach as Kat, who, who, who showed up right side up, detach from expectations, detach from this is supposed to work, this idea that if I meditate, I get this, if I do this, if I have crystals, if I, if I, if I. The enlightenment, the chaos is inherent in all compounded things. Strive on with diligence. Interesting. 38, Buddha. 38, with great compassion. Green Tara offers protection from desire and attachment. That's exactly what enlightenment talked about. Contemplate her benevolent expression, which encourages you to separate yourself from both the happiness and sorrow of this world so that you can be free. And to be free, free of expectations, free of whether it be debilitating thoughts, free of uh, spiritual technology, free of, again, I say expectations, but emotions, thoughts. This is what Buddha's message for you. This is what's blocking your manifestation. Let's take a look at the tarot. There is a lot of burden, heavy weight, and it could be of others on you. The Five of Swords. This is a lot. It can be determination. We'll see what this creator has in store for that Five of Swords. Ten of Cups. Beautiful the devil and the tower right above this five free as can be but we have such extremes from the ten of cups to the tower as it says happiness or sorrow whatever befalls you walk on untouched unattached un attached. The pandas, eight of cups. This, I see the transformation of those butterflies. The two of wands, a decision that has to be made. And manifesting, look at that, the magician. The magician right above the tower, right above bringing down maybe old belief systems, an epiphany, this idea of, oh, I didn't know. Five of Swords. Let's take a look at the Light and Shadow Tarot. I want to do this Five of Swords right there. I opened it up and there it is. Five of Swords guard ineffectually against the terrible swarm of locusts. A natural disaster is as terrible as floods, fire, locusts, summon up ca catastrophes, ancient and modern. A woman, a man, mature and humbly dressed, surrounding themselves with protective swords. Swords, though, are of no avail against this adversary. These farmers must face the setback of losing their entire crop. Their faces show concern. They realize the danger, but their expressions evince also um, resignation and abiding strength. They have seen other such disasters, and it's right below this tower. They will know future problems, but they are wise enough to understand that they will prevail over, pre over present problems. Venus and, and Aquarius are the astrological guardians. That's very interesting, right below the tower. It makes me want to go to that next, um, right above, the tower is right above. So let's go there next, rather than going to, the, we'll go to the Ten of Wands, but I want to see that tower. And Devil, because it's kind of right above this, Five of Swords. And with that, the meaning, reversal, 
debacle. Swords, however mighty, are no defense against locusts. Our defenses must be appropriate to the challenge. Sometimes we will be ill-equipped for the problems we are delivered into by fate. Perseverance and faith should get us through the tower. Chaos, sudden change, revelation, upheaval, the devil, shadow self, attachment, addiction. And from the very first card of the cat, detach. Buddha has said, unattached. Interesting. Chaos is inherent in all compounded things. Enlightened bound. Strive on with diligence as the five of swords has also. So that's keep on going. And when the magician is showing up, keep on going. Keep on manifesting. Keep on trying. And with detaching, this is your main blockage. Pile number three is attaching to said manifestations. Okay, I have got the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Wands. Do we see our Ten of Cups as heavy? Or is our Ten of Wands becoming our Ten of Cups? Let's take a look. Let's go to the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands are the burden of a man who trudges across an open field. A shadowy figure crouches on his spine, adding to the great weight. His goal, an inviting farmstead home, stands in the distance in a grove of trees. Yes, he has taken on too much, shouldered on wondrous burden. Home beckons, and the traveler should arrive there safely, but for the moment he has lost sight of the path. The shadow... As suggested by Jung, Carl Jung, represents our fears, the devil right there, our fears, and the side of ourselves we drive into the shadows. When we acknowledge the presence of our shadow and hold ourselves erect against the future, the weight of the shadow melts away. Not that it ever goes away entirely, for shadow is the natural and necessary complement of light. The secret is to take on burdens that are appropriate to our powers and to face our fears. Saturn, planetary god of heaviness and melancholy, guards the scene. That's exactly what the devil talks about. Adversary of the tower. Knowing that maybe our thoughts cannot battle that chaos that's, that's inherent. Ten of Cups. Let's go to the Ten of Cups. Very next card. Oh, let's read this. Oppression, cares, uneasiness, disquiet. These are all blocks. These are all what's blocking your manifestation. Being weighed down by moral burdens, by a dark presence, trepidations about reaching the safety and comfort of home. But the goal of home is already visible in the distance. With perseverance, the traveler, through hard pressed, will make it to the wish for goal, which is right there, the Ten of Cups, making it home. Ten of Cups span the sky, an arc of abundance above a joyful dancing pair. Oh, this is the Ten of Cups, I'm sorry, in this deck. Oh, my apologies. I was going to, you know what? That was meant to be. I'm going to read it. <laughs> Fulfillment, joy, celebration, the dance. I'm reading from the Light and Shadow, and I continued on to the Ten of Cups. That's funny. Fulfillment, joy, celebration, the dance of being, the interpretation of life, forces, harmony between opposites, the reconciliation of compliments, happiness and love and harmony in familiar relationships. Now let's go to this one, the Ten of Cups in this little one, and it is divine love, harmony and fulfillment. So what could very well be Blocking is disconnection. Now, let's, I find this in broken relationships. Now, isn't that what broken relationships, that's what the green, green man's bride talked about. Not committing to, whether it be family, whether it be to yourself, to your abilities. As we see the magician right above the tower, that doubt, that devil. And those are blocks. Which way do I go? Which path do I take? Which which spiritual, I guess, um, almost like this feeling of, of, I don't want to say dogma, but it feels like it, that you can be addicted to crystals, to sound bowls, to 
these things that you think will help your the, the rituals the, the spells and isn't that of the devil if you truly believe in your manifesting abilities in the ability to set out into the universe what it is that you want to manifest and then let go and continue on with your day and through the happiness the sorrows whatever befalls you walk on untouched unattached to really detach to know that ca the law of cause and effect is in effect is in fact in effect pile number three eight of cups let's see what the pandas have to say the pandas the eight of cups bye bye the life i once had something better is awaiting for me as i begin this new journey goodbye talk to you later see you probably or maybe never letting go yes realization emotional clarity realignment so what's blocking you is toxic relationships codependency baggage these things are holding you back. These energies are holding you back, which is what we see with the devil and the tower. Breaking that down. Two of wands. I think wands. Two of wands. So many possibilities and ventures to be had. Where should I go? The sparkling spark lake beyond the shadow bamboo forest or the valley of willow dragons ah they're both so fun and i want to undertake them all so brainstorming considering possibilities excitement for the future making plans what's blocking your plans your manifestations over commitment never settling down and irresponsibility the magician last card did you know that you can shoot sparkles out of your fingertips and make flowers blossom and grow? Did you know that you can do magic and that you are powerful and that you simply cannot fail unless you quit? Ah, non-commitment, which is what Green Man's Bride talked about. Earth, water, wind, and fire. They are at your command. Now go blow something up right above the tower. I think this is so cute. Light attributes, creation, imagination, empowerment, and kick-ass awesomeness that's what the magician panda is telling you and what's blocking you is manipulation arrogance destruction and misuse of power which is what that devil represents and stands for right there and that's what's blocking you from your manifestations pile number three and that's what i see for you and i'm sure i'll see you again take care from your forest fairy bye for now